Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about doing a side-by-side -side setup. And you can see here my setup has changed a little bit. I am uh, using my bigger usual telescope here which I've recently changed to use narrowband filters and my monochrome 1600mm cool camera and then I'm still using my 533 camera here with this new adapter that I showed you guys from uh, ZW the uh, not adapter but the filter the uh, duo band I think is the name which has like one band pass in H alpha and one band pass kind of around 03 and I'm gonna see how it works and this camera is connected to a 50 millimeters f1.4 canon lens that i got on yahoo auctions for crazily cheap so you know why not uh test it out and i'll be doing this side by side setup and so how i, did, how I made the side by side is i just used a side by side adapter from ADM uh, accessories, uh, which I'm linking to in the description, likely, if I don't forget. Otherwise, I'm probably showing a picture of the website right now, which um, basically lets you use Vixen dovetails on like two, two in a row, like one side by side, one with one telescope, the other with another telescope, and everything's fine. So I have my main telescope on one side, my secondary telescope on another, and they are uh, both link to power via my USB uh, splitter and uh, they're connected to you via USB to my PC. My PC only has two USB 3 ports so my guider which is on top of the main uh, scope has been downgraded to USB 2 but it should be fine since it just takes one image every three seconds. Uh, so not a big deal and everything is uh, pretty much ready. I have done a few things to optimize uh, this uh, little setup. The USB 3 cable as well as the power cables, they kind of, they don't go directly to my computer back there. They actually join this bundle of cables here to make sure I have like one point where everything goes together. It's supposed to be better for wind management. So cable management is important. It's good to do it properly and I never do it. And that's wrong. I should be doing it much better. Uh, but at least it's better than it was like three months ago. So huh, I'll call that progress. And uh, yes, so uh, this little thing there has my Astro Mechanics adapter for autofocus. I have a review of this adapter linked up above. It has the duo band uh, filter. And then we are ready to see how well this duo band filter will work across a large field of view. Uh, one of the things I'll be doing with this side-by-side -side setup is I'll do something called synchronized dithering. And you might have seen my video about dithering. If you haven't, you should absolutely watch it. It's linked above here. Uh, dithering is basically an operation by which you move a little bit your field of view uh, between every frame or every few frames uh, to avoid always having the noise of your, of your camera stacking uh, on itself. Um, and it averages out any fixed pattern noise, which is a good thing. And when you have two scopes imaging from the same mount, well, you could be dithering the ma main scope, so moving the field of view, effectively moving the mount a little bit, while the secondary scope is still doing an exposure. That's bad. Uh, so s synchronized dithering is a feature that's available in the free and open source imaging software called Nina, uh, which is awesome. I am biased because I am a contributor, but hey, whatever. And uh, you will have basically two instances of Nina running, one controlling this little scope, the other controlling the big scope along with the mount. And they'll both be connected to PHD2 and they'll both be uh, uh, like communicating to each other. And whenever uh, one has finished imaging, um, and it's time to dither, uh, the Nina will wait for the other to finish imaging before doing the dither op operation. So you're never losing frames because of dithering. And the synchronized dither works best for exposure length that are multiple of one another. So let's say this one exposes for 10 seconds, then this one should expose for a multiple of 10 seconds. We'll see how long this exposes because I think I'll be running it at like f1.8, maybe f2, and maybe f2.8. We'll see how well the lens works along with this uh, semi-narrowband filter for uh, color cameras. And yeah, so it's super exciting uh, to me. 
we'll see how it works uh, but before we go into that and it's crazy because i do have more or less of a clear sky right now i mean it's getting foggy already we need to align those two telescopes together originally i wanted to kind of have like a 200 millimeter lens uh, on this one and i wanted to point uh, this one to the sadder area so in the Cygnus like kind of close to the Cygnus wall and then use my rings there to kind of uh, move the angle of the secondary scope to point at the uh, veil nebula so I could capture the entirety of the veil nebula and then I thought about it how painful it would be to actually do that and I abandoned just at the thought of having to use these screws to recenter everything because it is a pain and I will prove that it's a pain because we're going to do it right now. What we're going to do is we're going to align this scope and that scope so that they point to the same object. And the moon is out, so I'll be using the moon. Ideally, I'd be using like terrestrial stuff, uh, but the problem is that it's full of buildings around here and I do not want to be a peeping Tom. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've used the roof of apartment buildings uh, before where they have like the light indicator for airplanes but with this 50 mil lens I'd, I'd definitely be catch catching like people's rooms and people's windows as well so I do not want to do that so I'll be using the moon it's out let's get to it while we're waiting let me get a sip of cider apple cider from Brittany uh, I love cider. Normally I should serve it in a bowl rather than in a glass, but hey, uh, it's good. And after all, I'm allowed to drink alcohol. It's Friday. Okay, here I am. I'm connected to my little computer there that connects uh, to everything. I'm going to uh, launch Nina just to connect to the scope, slew to the moon. Hopefully it's going to work. I might have to do some plate solving. Uh, but let's try this. Uh, I don't know why this setup is trying to use the 533. We're going to make it use the uh, 1600. Uh, yes, yeah, so about the synchronized dithering, uh, I'll go hard to set that up. So you'll use two instances of Nina, each with their own profile. But that will be in the next episode, which will only come once this rainy season here in Japan is over. Uh, but I should not be wasting time. Let me connect... Uh, I don't need to connect to the focuser. It should be... Ah, I don't know. I haven't... Well, let's connect to the focuser. Uh, let's connect to EQ mod. And then I'm going to also open Carte du Ciel. I'll unpark my scope. And Carte du Ciel, or Sky Charts. Uh, I am going to connect my telescope as well. And here we are. We're going to search for the moon la lune yes here we are uh, the moon come on and we're gonna telescope slew to moon it always amazes me i don't know it's just a two-axis robot really but i never get tired of looking watching my telescope slew. It's just so beautiful. I know I'm a geek. I'm a hopeless geek. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so it is slewing. I think it's actually going to get pretty close to the moon there. It might actually be on target, which is weird because when I actually uh, set this up, I moved the deck axis by 90 degrees, right? Because the bar that is on uh, the saddle there is not in the proper orientation my older scope would have been pointing this direction 90 degrees off so let's have a look at my imaging tab we're going to take a 0.1 second exposure and see if we are so, oh we are somewhat close to the moon okay okay so we're close enough that i am going to open up sharp cap now i'm not gonna exit I'm just going to open up SharpCap to have fast video. Oh, I forgot to drink this. Cheers. Okay, let's use the whole area of the sensor. Let's uh, pump the gain, pump the exposure time. We see the moonlight is, is coming from that corner there. So we'll want to basically center the moon. And so I am going to go to this. EQ mod, we're going to change the slew rates for both RA and DEC. So the mount will actually move 
noticeably when I press these buttons. And then we are going to try to go west. Did something happen? Aha, it gets brighter. We're getting there. Okay, uh, let's go north. Uh, it's, I think it's worse. Let's go south. Oh no, it's north. I like manual plate solving. Okay, we're getting there. Let's lower. Oh, that moon is beautiful. I want to take images of it. Do you mind? Do you mind if I take some images of it? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, let's take some images of the moon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't help it. Oh, I love the moon. Let's uh, get a lower resolution. Like this. Yeah, this is not bad. We're going to lower a bit. This. Oops. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to center it. Make sure that we're more or less centered. Cool. Oops. Nice! Ah, the moon. I never get tired of it. This is really neat. Cool. So, uh, let me take some images. It's actually through a thin layer of clouds. Maybe today I'll just go mono 8 so I can capture faster. I don't know if it's, if it's a great idea. Also, let me set the tracking rate to lunar. And then we're going to go to quip capture of 5000 frames. Let's see how well it works. Now it's like, yeah, 20 frames per second at, at uh, 8 bips. Okay, I got 1000 frames. I think it's enough. I actually uh, saved an AVI. I should have uh, saved as Sir, but whatever. And we're getting buffered frames. So let's wait for this to finish. And one of the things I realized is I didn't even check the focus. I didn't move the focuser since the last time I imaged the moon. Uh, and the temperature is more or less the same. So maybe it's okay. We'll see. I don't care. This was just like a shot in the dark, really. Excellent. So we're done. And we can see that I am more or less centering the moon itself. I don't need to be super precise. And now let's connect to the other camera, which is uh, my 533 MC Pro. Oh, great. All of the frames are getting dropped. Let me reconnect the camera. Yes, yeah, sometimes I have trouble with sharp cap with uh, this camera, which is a bit of, uh, it's sad. So let's, uh, let's actually use Nina. So let's go to Nina. We're going to connect the, uh, well, we're going to disconnect this camera. We're going to connect to the 533 MC Pro. And, huh. Yeah, the gain settings should be back to 101, okay. And we're going to go to imaging and we're going to take uh, pictures in the loop. Huh, it's actually pretty well centered already. Huh, I was already pretty well aligned. That's almost depressing. And we're ju I'm just going to adjust the screws there. To center the moon. And you know what? I think that's good enough. We'll be properly centered, more or less. Um, I'm gonna stop this, yeah. I think this is good. I think it's perfect. So now we are sure that we have this uh, telescope here and this telescope well aligned. I just used the three screws that I have on my uh, ring here to really adjust the angle of the, uh, the camera pointing towards the moon. But yeah, this is great. And so here we are, we are properly aligned between uh, this telescope or this camera lens and this telescope. So we are ready to take our images. Uh, of course, the sky is not ready. The rainy season is not ready, but as soon as it is done, I'll definitely give it a go to do uh, simultaneous imaging with this very wide field uh, camera and this very 
not very, but somewhat narrow field uh, telescope as well. So uh, hopefully we'll have that in the next couple of weeks if it clears up. And I hope you enjoyed this video that gives you uh, ideas about using a side-by-side -side setup. I'll be, of course, uh, having the next video where I configure my profiles and my synchronized dithering between um, the two telescopes. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please click like. Please also subscribe to my channel because there's tons of new content coming up. And uh, don't forget, you know, whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.